on the water, new water treatment plant. It's uh, May, and uh, we have the new water treatment plant. Don, it's been uh, November since the last time we were out here. Been a few months. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about what's going on and where we're at. Well, I think as uh, we scan around a little bit later on, uh, you're going to see quite a change from what it was in November. Um, we now have an actual building at the far end of the site that's our chemical building. Uh, said basin's in between, and we are currently standing on the uh, Floor, upper floor of the filter building. Um, the project now is about 50% at completion and uh, moving along quite well. What's a sad building? <laughs> said, <laughs> said, <laughs> you know, you say those things, they don't even know what you're saying. Yes, it's where our, our sedimentation base is where the water will settle out on its way to our filters. One of the uh, final processes is going through our filters and, and then uh, we have very large granular activated carbon basins to finish our water and give it real polished uh, quality at this end. And uh, I realize I'm using some of them. So that's the, that's what said is. Yeah, those are terms, water terms they use all day, and we're like, what? What was that, Don? Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of helps. It is. Last time we were here, we we're staying on dirt, and we had we had a pretty good winter for building, didn't we, Don? Oh, <laughs> it, we couldn't order a better winter. They never had to stop pouring concrete all winter long. It went very, very well. So we're actually doing really well. Percentage of completion is where now? We're right at about 50%. We look for uh, actual completion to be July of 2017. And it's looking really good. Peterson's doing a good job, aren't they? Oh, they're, they're doing a very quality job. We're very pleased. You know, it's, it's good to know that what you're getting out here is the kind of product that's going to last for 100 years. Uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a very good uh, water treatment plant and something we can look in the future. Bob, we've got some that's disturbing traffic a lot more than anything else around here. Tell us a little bit about the underground pipelines. Yeah. You know, um, oh, what we have is we have um, out here on 66. We have to bring the water to the new plant. So on the east side of the on the road, which is this side, is where our raw water will come to the new plant. Those two lines have already been in, installed all the way up here. And then on the west side of 66, that'll be our finished water, the water that leaves the plant and ties into our current distribution system. And as we speak today, uh, they're just finishing up the last line there, getting ready to bring it straight across 66 to tie in. And hopefully by maybe the end of next week, um, they can be completed through there with their testing and have those lines in service and ready to go here for the new plant. Pretty important stuff. I mean, we need to have that water to supply our new water treatment plant. And it's been difficult because it's affected traffic. People that live out of town that come from up north, it's made it tough. We sure do appreciate your patience. Um, it's been difficult. We're getting through that. We know it's been tough, but it'll be opened up here soon and we'll be able to move traffic through again. The pump station, Don, it's moving really big today. Today is uh, the 18th. And if you get an opportunity, if you could have gone by, um, before now, we don't have the pumps, the uh, pump station building up, but it's going really well too, isn't it, Don? Yes, uh, it's. Uh, they actually started laying block on that only about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, they have got uh, just about to the ceiling height, uh, all the way around on the interior walls. Uh, there will be an actual finish layer of split face blocks of uh, the same color uh, scheme that we're going to have here at the actual plant itself. Let's talk a little bit about overall money, Don. I, it's it's kind of fun when it's not coming directly out of our pocket, but we're we're pretty stingy about how we spend it, aren't we? I mean, we like to watch those things and make sure we're doing it right. Overall project for the uh, for the water treatment plant is how much? The actual plant itself uh, came in right around thirty-six million dollars. Uh, the offsite piping was an additional almost four million, and total plant total project is we're looking at forty million dollars, which is a takes a lot of residential support and we really appreciate that. You know, we, you probably just received some information in, your, uh, in the mail about the water to, in our city of Piqua and, and uh, I have to honestly say it's one of the most, uh, one of the, these guys are very, very particular about putting out good water in the city of Piqua and I have to say it's an honor to work with them. They do a very good job and they are very, very meticulous.
about doing a good job of making sure you get the very best water even out of a plant that was built. And what year was that one built? 1925. <laughs> we're 91 <laughs> years in. 91 years, and we're still putting out good water. And they do a very good job. And I, I just, they really do. They 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 care about what they're doing. And these guys are uh, are an honor to work with. They do a great job. They really do. Uh, it's very important that uh, they represent the city well. And when they say they're going get, to get get you good water, they're getting you good water, something you can depend on. Don, tell us a little bit about uh, the work that's going to be happening in the next few months here. Uh, we're going to try and get back in less than six months this next time. But uh, the guy who does the program got a little busy. <laughs> so we're going to try and come back. But tell us what's going to be happening here in the future. In, in the very near future, in fact, uh, we are getting the equipment put in those sedimentation basins. <laughs> And uh, we are going to be having more and more equipment arriving on site. Structural steel for the actual building is arriving uh, within, by the end of this month. Uh, masons have their uh, course, uh, first course laid here on the filtration and sedimentation building. And uh, it's uh, going to be really starting to take shape very quickly. Our admin building is in the very front of this uh, building we're currently standing in and those foundations will be poured within the next probably at least next 60 days. Wow. You know, we probably need to come out and do something a little bit sooner then because there's going to be a lot of changes and once we get past the slab work actually this the actual the uh, as it would be the grade level things really begin to take a, a lot of changes and it's it's good to see it. So I'd like to come back out here and do what you let us have let us do that. Oh, absolutely. We <laughs> welcome you anytime. Good. Well, we need to do more of it. It's been a great program. Bob, is there anything else you'd like to add about the project? Uh, yeah, just um, when you pan around, you'll be able to see we also are under construction right now for our clear wells. That is our storage for our finished water. Uh, we'll have the clear wells are together, but each well will hold one million gallons of water. We'll have good storage of finished water. And then also this will be on the Johnston Farm, for lack of a better direction, area of the, of the plant. Um, we'll also have our backwash holding tank, which is another big basin that they have uh, constructed that now and as we you pan around and see that that'll actually be backfilled to the top of those basins so you'll see we do have a lot of backfill left to go in this area as well there is there's a lot and we're going to be showing you some of those pictures before the program's over but thank you guys very much for being a part of this we're going, going to be back and we'll be back with you we've got some other places to see thank you very much thanks guys this is Bob Grazer back at uh, North Main Main Street Streetscape with Amy Havener. Good to have you with us, Amy. Thank you, Bob. Same day, different face. Uh, we're going to talk Better a little bit of. Right yeah, absolutely. Right. Better stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, is this construction, you know, we're supposed to have hard hats on, but we're outside of the zone, right? That's correct, Bob. We're not in the zone. We are not in the zone today. <laughs> Certainly say that again. Where are we at, Amy? Tell us what we're doing. What project is it? Who's doing the work? Is it O.Let? That's important. It is, Bob. <laughs> As you said, we're on the North Main Street Streetscape project. This is the streetscape, which is between Green and North Street on Main Street. And um, we're just continuing on with what we've done in the other blocks in the downtown area. Same type of um, brick paver pattern. We'll have some new concrete work, some new sidewalk. Um, we'll have some light poles, decorative light poles, a couple trees. Um, the contractor for this job is Double J Construction, and uh, they started a couple weeks ago on this job, starting on the west side. If you've been downtown, you've noticed just half of the street tore up. That's why they're going to do the west side and then come back and move over to the east side. Um, we actually did that to coordinate with our downtown. Um, this weekend. Yes, we have our Taste, Taste of the, the Arts, Arts this weekend. Yeah. And so our downtown Main Street director, Lorna Swisher, had asked if we could go ahead and just start on the west side because they have some activities planned. And they said because planned. of you. And we said whatever we can do to help Lorna out, we will do because that's just the kind of group we are. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, Double J is doing this project. It's about a $225,000 project. We received some grant money through the Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission and through the Ohio Public Works Commission. So we've been pretty fortunate with our um, financing for this project. And it is O.Let, but why don't you tell everybody what that means for us? O.Let means we pay um, uh, Ohio Department of Transportation uh, a fee to help us take care of managing the project actually. Uh, so we go through them with uh, their project management on the, on the site pretty much. Uh, a little different, but city still has uh, 
is here for the property owners and here for the the uh, tenants that are here on Main Street to make sure we represent them the best we can and make sure that they're getting represented completely. Um, it is a it's a little bit different when we're downtown trying to work with ODOT. Uh, we're trying to work through that and then just make sure that people are getting taken care of as any time. Please be careful when you're driving through these areas. We hope that uh, it won't be too much of an inconvenience. Overall time on this one is three months. A month and a half per side uh, is the longest amount of time I think we're going to be. I think they'll be out of here pretty quick. Not that big of a job, not that big of it's only one block. Uh, so it goes pretty quick and it'll be pretty, pretty painless. I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> um, Amy, tell me just a little, a little bit about um, the overall project. When do you think, um, let's see where are we at? Uh, anything else you can add? <laughs> Sure, Bob. <laughs> One thing I did want to point out, you know, I said it's going to be consistent with what we have in the downtown blocks further south. Um, this one is a little bit unique because we do have the road actually widens as we get down to um, to the north end of it toward Green or North Street. And um, some of the property owners during the negotiation phase for the right of way had some concerns with losing parking. So um, this block that we're in, only half of it will have the complete streetscape. The northern half will taper back to allow parking, so there'll be minimal brick and minimal um, landscape features, but we will have the new sidewalk. So um, not a complete true streetscape, but we did work with the property owners to keep their parking as, as they requested. Yeah, that's pretty important. And we, so it won't look quite as everything did on all the old blocks uh, continuing down from the north side, uh, but we do have the last block that we still have to get to. One of the things I wanted to mention was city does get a lot of grant money and, and that's how we get a lot of projects done. Other municipalities in our region don't do quite as well as what we do and, and that's a big part of what we do here in the city of Pickwood, isn't it, Amy? I mean, a lot of our work comes through good uh, grant money that we get and it's a major part of our engineering projects that we have. Yeah, as I'd mentioned, we have two different sources for this project that we receive grants. Um, and we do have that quarter percent income tax that we do. Uh, we renew every 10 years, and that allows us to put up our local match for these projects. So we are very fortunate in that we have that to generate the local match, which means we can take advantage of these projects. And we are doing a lot with grants, and we hope to continue to. Grant Town USA, we do we do, do a lot. We really do. Uh, I'm working on something with Nikki Reese, Reese right now about the mausoleum, trying to get another grant for, for the city of Piqua. So it's may, it's important, but that's how we try to, uh, our, our match funds that we have to put in on some of the funds, uh, but also a lot of the money that we get is because of our efforts to go out and get that, procure that additional money. Uh, Amy, is there anything else you'd like to say about the project? Well, I think, Bob, you should probably give a shout out to the business owners because they are, you said you hope no one's inconvenienced. We know this is an inconvenience for the business owners and the patrons visiting them, but um, we just, we know it'll be a great project when it's done. So why don't you give a shout out? You know, you've had quite a bit of working um, relationships with a lot of the business owners down here. Yeah, that's right, Amy. Uh, it'll only be three months. They've been very, very kind and very helpful. Uh, just bear with us and we're going to make it as easy as possible. If there's anything that any that, um, that that can be added, please make sure that you just get with me. Bob Grays will be more than happy to, to help anybody who might be having problems with the, with the project itself. Be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, with that, I think we'll just go ahead and go to our next site. We've got another place we're going to be working with a special with guest special of ours. Guest. Yes, <laughs> indeed. And uh, please stand by for more. Thank you. And we are back with Marty Grove of the Police Department. Good to have you with us, Marty. Thank you, Bob. Great to be here, as always. <laughs> Tell us more about, we, we had to do a special program more, an additional part of this pro program, and talk a little bit about these RRFBs. Tell us why. Well, unfortunately, um, we're hearing a lot of complaints still that cars are not yielding when the lights on the RRFBs are activated. We just want to remind the citizens, the drivers, that when you're approaching a crosswalk, uh, we'll talk about the RFBs first. When the lights are flashing, the pedestrians have the right of way and cars need to yield. So the purpose of the RFBs is to make an advance notification to the drivers that somebody is attempting to cross the street. That gives them a warning to slow down and yield to those pedestrians. Even the intersections without the lights, or in these cases, even if somebody didn't activate the lights at these intersections, Vehicles, uh, drivers still need to yield the right of way to the pedestrians. Uh, this is a problem we want to try to address as we're getting into the warmer months 
kids are going to be out, families are walking, and we just don't want a tragedy to happen. Thank you, Marty. And I want to talk a little bit about, we talked about at the beginning of the program about said basins. We talked about what that was. RRFB is our rectangular rapid flashing beacons so that we understand what those are. Uh, we say it all the time. Just wanted you to help you understand that's what we're talking about. These are the, actually the lighted beacons that we're talking about here. That's the RRFB. Uh, just so you understand what we're talking about. And they do flash. They're pretty brilliant. They work really well and even highlight conditions, don't they, Marty? Yes, they do, and we're going to try and show you today. It's a nice, bright, sunny day, and we're going to... Uh, it is a bright, shiny day. It is. Yeah, it's it a beautiful is. day. <laughs> we're going to load up our cameraman with Bob, and we're going to have him drive down the road, and we're going to activate these lights so you can see how bright they are. Uh, they're, they're on a sensor switch, so even in the middle of the night, they'll, they'll dim down some. But again, I just ask that all the drivers out there, when they see them activated, make sure you are yielded to the pedestrians and those areas without the lights pay extra special attention to and remember the pedestrians do have the right of way. Won't that be fun? We're going to ride and do a special program with actually live gonna... in your vehicle. How about that? <laughs>